Hello there friends and welcome. For today's very fun Pathfinder build we have a Feylord, an Azata enchantment focused caster with access to many powerful crowd control spells at extreme DC 60 plus, capable of playing many tricks on the enemy like the face of old. With just a single cast of a spell you'll be able to not only make entire packs of enemies laugh themselves to death, but also immediately crowd control entire armies, including even demon lords, to shut them down into submission as they stand still drooling on the floor, unable of taking any action besides get attacked by your party. Furthermore, you'll also be able to use the very powerful instant death illusion spells to outright instantly kill any enemy in the game, including packs. As an Azata, thanks to the favorable magic superpower, your crowd control prowess will be enhanced to the max, by forcing enemies to roll twice against any of your spells and pick the worst result. Later, through ZP magic, you'll also be able to even deal high area of effect damage and single target as well. Plus, you also have some pretty nice defenses with extreme saving throws capable of resisting anything, and even higher than 400 hit points for a spellcaster, with enough persuasion to make any dialogue check, the true face of the party. So without further ado, let us incarnate the Lantern King from Kingmaker and start on our Feylord build. Alright, so when it comes to class for our enchantment-focused Laughing Mage, Sorcerer would be my preferred pick. You can truly stack enchantment DC way higher with Sorcerer than let's say Wizard or Arcanist. There's around three ways you can go. The first is cross-blooded. Cross-bloodeds can have two bloodlines, even at the early game. And ideally, you want to pick undead for your second bloodline, so that your mind-affecting spells can affect even undead enemies, who are immune to mind-affecting by default. The main issue I have with this is that, well, cross-blooded sorcerers learn spells even one level later than normal sorcerers. I really cannot stand the extra delay, I think it's very annoying. One level delay I already find annoying, two levels is simply too much. And as far as undead enemies, you'll have other tools to handle them, such as Grease, Glitter Dust and other powerful area of effect damage spells later on. The second is the Seeker Sorcerer. This is a special sorcerer archetype that basically doesn't lose anything, the only thing they really lose is their bloodline ability that sorcerers gain at level 15. On the other hand, they gain a lot of bonus feats. Besides the normal sorcerer bloodlines, three extra feats. So it can make for a very versatile sorcerer. The only issue is that, well, one of the powers we will gain at level 15 from the Arcana bloodline is able to grant us plus two to the DC of our enchantment spells, which is pretty nice. The thing is, I have so many versatile fighter mage sorts of characters already, <laughs> that for this build in particular, I want to make a truly DC focused pure mage character, which is why my preferred pick is Overwhelming Mage. The main downside is that you actually don't have any bonus feats whatsoever, but you know we can make up for that through our normal feat selection. On the other hand, this build is kind of feat starved. So their main advantage is first, the Overwhelming Penetration ability, which increases your spell penetration bonus every 6 levels past level 1. It can help a lot early game because you know, all of the demon enemies in the game, even the lowliest of them, like the Dredge, still have spell resistance, which you will need to penetrate to affect with most of your spells. Their main power, however, is the overwhelming spell feature, which lets you sacrifice any spell slot of level 3 or higher to increase the DC of the next spell you cast in 2 rounds, equal to one third of the sacrificed spell level, so up to plus 3 for a level 9 slot. Besides that, they still retain their bloodline feature with full progression. Because of this, overwhelming mages are potentially the sorcerers with the highest DC possible, which is why I'll be picking them. So even for unfair, you'll still achieve extremely high DC. For race, I truly recommend you go with human for this one. As I said, this build will be pretty fit starved until around the upper mid levels, and it helps having an extra fit early. But you know, you can also go with elf or half elf, and then pick dual heritage for the elven magic feature, which increases your spell penetration by plus two, even at level one. I personally prefer the extra feat. For the background, the usual street urchin and pickpocket for the bonus tree initiative. Now when I first recorded this video, I made a mistake and went with warrior and mercenary for long spear proficiency, as I did forget that sorcerers, unlike wizards, do start with long spear proficiency by default, so you don't need it. As far as your ability points, Charisma is our main stat, of course, you want 19 at character creation to truly maximize DC. Besides that, 14 constitution for some nice hit points, 14 dexterity, and then I would leave strength at 12, just for some melee potential. You can, however, dump both intelligence and wisdom, 
and start with 14 in all physical stats. I just don't think it's needed because, you know, Azatas have a way to increase every single one of their stats by a stacking plus 5 eventually. As far as skill points, persuasion and use magic device, this character can be the face of the party since we'll have very high persuasion from our uber charisma. And besides that, knowledge world. If only so, our sorcerer can cook for the party members. So you can still be useful when resting and camping. As far as your feats, spell focus and enchantment. And for the second one as a human bonus feat, greater spell focus and enchantment. For your bloodline, this is very important. You definitely want the Fey bloodline as early as you can, because of the special Arcana ability that increases the difficulty class of all spells from the Compulsion subschool by plus 2. And honestly, 99% of the enchantment spells in the game you use are of the Compulsion subschool. So just at level 1, your Laughing Mage will already have plus 4 to the DC of their enchantment spells, 2 from Greater Spell Focus and 2 from the Fey Bloodline. It doesn't get any better than that, not so early in the game. When it comes to your spells, I'll guide you through the best ones, especially as some of these will be unique, since it is my first time doing an enchantment character. Anyways, the first one should always be Grease. Yes, I know we won't have spell focus into Conjuration, however, Grease is still amazing for the early game, especially for the few enemies that will be immune to mind-affecting spells, like Undead. Plus, Grease even bypasses spell resistance too. And as an overwhelming mage, we can increase its DC further, even without focus. Second, and this one will be an enchantment spell, Hypnotism. The reason to pick this instead of sleep is that sleep stops being useful way faster. Hypnotism also hits way more enemies and will fascinate all of the targets. Fascinated enemies can't really do anything but just stand there looking at you, so it's a perfect crowd control for the early game. And as I said, it affects up to 2d4 level of enemies. Sleep is only 4. As far as deity, any deity that allows the Azata alignments, I would personally go with Caden because he's more of a trickster god. And well, we are a mage build all about making the enemies laugh themselves to death. And then Chaotic Good for our alignment, perfect for a trickster fey like Azata. For your first level 3 feat, this is when we get started into the spell penetration line. Because we aren't merging with Leech or Angel, we won't have mythic spells that can bypass spell resistance. So basically all of our spells will need to penetrate the enemy's spell resistance, thus spell penetration. As for another level 1 spell, I would go with Enlarge Person, this is one of the best buffs in the game for most of the early and mid game, especially for melee characters, especially for your own sorcerer, since we already have long spears and with a size increase from Enlarge Person, we can truly attack from very far away. At level 4, increase Charisma, which is also what should be increasing on all the other levels to truly maximize our enchantment DC. As for your first level 2 spell, Glitter Dust without a doubt. Once again, we don't have spell focus into Conjuration, but both Grease and Glitter Dust are amazing for most of the early and even some of the mid game. Plus, when it comes to our bread and butter enchantment spell, which will be Hideous Laughter, we'll be gaining this for free at the next level from our bloodline anyways. At level 5, pick Greater Spell Penetration, to truly maximize our spell pen even early on. And then the Shield spell for a nice self buff. The reason I won't bother with Mage Armor is that, well, there are plenty of scrolls and potions of mage armor, and even these will last for one hour of real time, which is plenty. Plus, eventually you'll get braces of armor with even higher than plus 4. At this level, we'll already have hideous laughter for free, so for another level 2 spell, either mirror image for a very nice self-defensive buff to ensure safety, or the blur buff if you don't have another character capable of casting it, like Nenio, a Scald, or a Bard, or even Wojif. Because I usually go with Scalds, I can just rely on them to cast blur. When it comes to sorcerers, since we are limited in spell selection, spells that can be cast by other party members are better left to them. As for your first level 3 spells, haste without a doubt, nothing will be as efficient as haste. For our level 7 feat, be sure to pick heightened spell. Heighten will give us amazing spell book flexibility and also increase the difficulty class of our most powerful enchantment spells, such as hideous laughter, with more casts too, of course. It is true that spontaneous casters take a full round action to cast meta magic, but through the sorcerer's reflex mythic ability, which this build will get pretty early, we'll be able to overcome that just fine, and you can always rely on meta magic quick and rods too. And then pick true strike for another level 1 spell. This can help a lot, especially when it comes to hitting ray spells later on, as we won't really be getting precise and point blank shot. <laughs> no feats to spare. Pick sense vitals here, a pretty powerful self buff to add sneak attack. For a second level 3 spell, heroism, but just like blur, 
If you already have another party member capable of doing it, like a bard, pick Displacement instead for the very powerful 50% Concealment boost. Amazing for any melee character, including pets. For your first level 4 spell, Overwhelming Grief. The reason we are picking this now is that, well, hideous laughter, through the aid of the best joke's mythic ability, can truly hit all of the enemies at once, and crawl control them to death, however, some enemies, including some demons, will be immune to hideous laughter, they will not to overwhelming grief, however, which basically shuts enemies down by preventing them from taking any action, and even sharply reducing their armor class. For our level 9 feat, this is pretty important. You absolutely need to get into Lore Master at the next level for a special, combo that I will soon show you. So for now, skill focus and then either arcana or world. Since I went with world for cooking, this is what I'm picking. And then get Scorching Ray as a second level spell. So for all the other good fire spells, you might have noticed that I have some of them for free here, all thanks to the red salamander ring. Scorching Ray, however, is not added by this ring, so it is in your best interest to get it if you want some nice single target damage. And at this point, it's starting to scale pretty well. For another level 3 spell, Greater Magic Weapon. It is true that Divine Casters can also get this, but for them, it's a level 4 spell, and level 4 Divine Spells are very much in demand. As for another level 4 spell, Greater False Life. The reason I don't pick Greater Invisibility is that, well, as a face Sorcerer, we get the Fleeting Glance ability for free at this level, which lets us become Greater Invisible for a few rounds per day equal to our Sorcerer level. As I said before, level 10 will be your first Lord Master level. The main reason is to steal a very powerful Divine level 5 spell from the Cleric spell list. Greater Command. This is actually one of the best enchantment spells in the entire game. It affects enemies only, hits a very wide area, and if you choose the Halt variant, the enemies are basically crowd controlled into submission because they won't be able to take any action at all, they'll just stand there staring at you, Amazing for crowd control. Also, enemies that are immune to hideous laughter because they can't be knocked down will not be immune to greater command. This spell is so powerful that you can truly just use meta magic versions of hideous laughter and greater command from now onwards as your main enchantment, bread and butter spells, until level 18, which is when you learn the truly ultimate enchantment spell, Overwhelming Presence which works pretty much in a similar effect to Greater Command. Now, the only true downside is that Greater Command, well, it's not a compulsion spell, so you do lose a plus 2 to DC, but you know we have so many other boosts from gear, from class features, that it doesn't matter. Don't forget the buffs too. And speaking about the buffs, as your first level 5 spell, be sure to pick Mind Fog. This creates a very nasty cloud, and if the enemy fails their will saving throw, they'll take a minus 10, to all the subsequent will saves, which pretty much seals their fate, right? And by the way, this is enchantment and compulsion, so at full DC. Ideally, you want to quicken a mind fog as you reduce the enemy saving throws by minus 10 and then seal their fate by casting your main enchantment spell like Greater Command or Hideous Laughter at the same round right after that. And yes, we will also be getting ways to quicken this for free eventually. So this is a pretty important level because we get not only Greater Command, but also Mind Fog. Now, from level 11 onwards, until up to around level 16, be sure to resume progression into Overwhelming Mage. The main reason is that the main power from the Arcana Bloodline, which we'll be getting through Mythic Progression, only comes online at level 15 of Sorcerer which will increase the DC of our enchantment spells by another plus 2. As for our level 11 feat, you know, you can pick Persistent Spell, which forces the enemies to save two times against your enchantment and debuffing spells. The only issue is that you know, at level 13, as an Azata, we'll be getting the favorable magic superpower, which does the same. I personally think it is a bit overkill, especially because of how high our DC will be. So what I would rather pick now is Spell Focus and Evocation. At the next level, we'll be getting some pretty powerful level 6 spells that have synergy with Azata, such as Chain Lightning, and of course Hellfire Ray, later on Storm Bolts too, all Evocation. But the main reason is to pick Spell Specialization at level 13, which will truly help us achieve the maximum damage with Hellfire Ray early. And as I said, I prefer to have as much power as I can earlier, if possible, instead of later. You can of course ignore this and Spell Specialization and like pick a few melee feats now, like Outflank. But just you know, I have so many other versatile Fighter Mage characters, why not go with a pure enchantment, crowd control focused one for once. For another level 2 spell, go with False Life, and yes, this does stack with Greater False Life. 
for a pretty nice wall of temporary hit points when needed. And then, if you want more spell damage, you can actually go with Battering Blast here. The problem is, you know, we'll soon be getting Hellfire Ray, which is simply way better damage. I would just pick Vampiric Touch for even more temporary hit points, and by the way, you can just cast this on your allies, then heal them right after, as a means of pre-buffing, so you don't need to come close to the enemy. And then, pick Phantasmal Killer here for another level 4 spell, so... This is one of the two rare illusion spells that can instantly kill the enemy. And since we are soon getting favorable magic, the Azata superpower that forces the enemies to roll twice and pick the worst result, this can be quite respectable even without focus into illusion, because our DC will be super high regardless. As for another level 5 spell, Animal Growth can be nice if you have pets, but you know, others like Amelia and Daniel can cast it instead. And I always go with Cam. She is helpful, is she not? <laughs> Echolocation is something you can save for the Azata spell, because you get that as an Azata. I suppose you might go with Stone Skin Communal if you don't have Camellia. Otherwise, Feeble Mind can be nice against enemy spellcasters, because they take a minus 4 penalty on the saving throw, and this is an enchantment compulsion spell. Might as well pick this for once for some fun. At level 12, we get our first level 6 spells. As I said before, because of the Red Salamander Wing, we already have the Super OP Hellfire Ray for free. Greater Dispel Magic is also something you'll learn for free from the Fey Bloodline, thus the thumbs down. Honestly, most of the spells here are basically buffs that are better left to clerics, shamans, and... I mean, I suppose if you want to be a Dragon Azata, you can start picking the Dragon Kind spells for like more armor class and style and blink. Ideally, the spell to pick now is Chain Lightning. This has very nice synergy with Azata and ZP magic, which we'll be getting, eventually, for very nice area of effect damage. Plus, we also have spell focus into evocation, so why not? As for your level 13 feat, spell specialization and Hellfire Ray. Hellfire Ray gains a big boost of power at 15 caster level. With spell specialization, despite being level 13, we already treat our Hellfire Ray as if we were 15 for two rays at once also at max damage, 15d6. As I said, I do prefer builds that gain power as early as they can, instead of later. Every level on Mars, the game will keep on asking what you want to specialize in, and you know, just keep on picking Hellfire Ray until level 19, which is the cap. After that, you'll want to go with Chain Lightning, so yes, this feat will still remain useful until the end, because Chain Lightning is one of those rare spells that despite not being a mythic spell, does not have a cap on damage, so the higher your caster level, even past 20, the higher the damage. Then pick Dimension Door here. The reason is that we are close to Chapter 4, and there are many areas there that can only be accessed through Dimension Door for some unique and missable loot. As for another level 6 spell, I'll just go with Transformation for the versatility it can give you, just in case you want to melee. As far as your first level 7 spell, Legendary Proportions is the buff that really stands out here. After all, it is one of the ultimate buffs in the whole game. The thing is, other characters can also cast it, like Amelia, who I always use. What I would personally pick is Ice Body, for quite a lot of immunities, most importantly, critical hits, precision damage, sneak attacks, and also ability damage. It is true that we gain Fiery Body for free at level 9, which is basically an upgrade over this, but you know, level 9 spells are 4 levels later from now, level 18 only. And at this point, you are very close to chapter 4, where enemies get a massive boosting power, lots of powerful demons there, so why not go with Ice Body? to ensure you remain safe. For our level 15 feat, Improved Initiative. Once again, at this point, the enemies start getting tougher, have higher initiative scores, so why not? And then you can pick anything for another level 5 spell, it won't really matter. I suppose as a level 6 buff, you might pick Mass Cat's Grace, because, because Divine Casters don't get this one by default, besides the Animal Domain. It's just that we already have the best debuffing and damage spells. Your other level 7 spell can be anything too. Now, level 16 will be our last overwhelming mage level, because at this point we'll have 15 sorcerer levels to qualify for the Arcana Bloodline plus 2 DC ability, and we even get a fun Fey Magic boost to our spell penetration too, which kinda doesn't matter at this point, but you know it's for free. As far as your first level 8 spells, I would personally pick Stormbolts. We have Evocation Focus, we have High DC, this not only deals very high damage, 1d8 per caster level, hits enemies only, a huge area, and can even stun enemies to boot. However, as a spontaneous caster, you can use a certain bracer to grant you access to this for free. There's always Frightful Aspect, which is better left for a cleric like Sociel, who will be closer to the enemies. Sea Mantle, on the other hand, can make for a pretty powerful self-buff. And for a Dragon Sorcerer, there's always Dragon Kind 3. 
So from level 17 onwards, we'll resume progression into Lore Master up to the max level of 5 at level 20. For our level 17 feat, I would pick Improved Critical and Ray to truly maximize our Hellfire Race potential, as it will be our main single target damage ability. Now at level 18, you get another Lore Master secret. This can truly go in a number of different ways, especially because at this point in particular, we already have access to level 9 spells. Something you can do is, well, because sorcerers have a pretty small amount of level 9 spells learned, especially non-merged sorcerers, you can use the spell selection feature here to gain more level 9 spells at once, as you have more of them faster. Or, you know, you can always pick a combat feat here if you want more melee power. For example, you could even potentially pick Shatter Defenses at this level, which would highly contribute not only to your melee attacks, but also your ray attacks. What I prefer to do is to steal a level 9 spell, just to get as many as I can early on. So I would go for Wizard Spell, Sorcerer, and then Weird. I mean, Weird is the ultimate instant death spell in the game. It's basically an area of effect version of Phantasmal Killer, and Azata casters are very unique in that they can make the enemy have to roll two times per weird, thanks to favorable magic. Lastly, despite being illusion and not enchantment, we have so many boosts to DC that it doesn't matter. So I would get weird for free, we also have fire body for free thanks to our fire ring, and then as an actual spell learned choice, I would pick overwhelming presence. This is the ultimate enchantment spell in the entire game, you basically cast this, there's no immunity the enemies can have, unless they are immune to mind affecting, huge area just like greater command, if the enemies fail the save, which they will, thanks to our huge DC, they are just left there, standing still, unable to do anything, move, attack, cast spells, they can't do anything at all, kinda like the halt greater command. Even if they make the save, they'll still be staggered for one round. Staggered is a pretty powerful debuff, because it prevents the enemy from taking multiple actions, so they can only attack once, which does matter, as some late game enemies have like 10 attacks, such as Merilith per round, and also reduces their spell casting limit to just one, so they can't quicken a spell. Now, like most enchantment spells, the enemy saves every round to break free, but even if they pass, so they recover early from the spell, they'll take 1d6 points of Wisdom Drain, which reduces their obvious saving throws, and also still remain staggered for 1d4 rounds, so overall it's a very stacked spell, with multiple uses, even if the enemy makes the save, which they won't. As for your level 19 feat, honestly at this point we truly already have everything we could want, it's kinda why I said humans help a lot, because our feat selection is pretty tight. You can pick something like the spell Synergy, while we don't have the best caster level for the spell, usually you're going to dispel at least a single effect from bosses like the Demon Lords, they'll take a minus 2 penalty on their saves against our spells. Besides that, I suppose you can pick Bolster Spell now to further increase the power of your Hellfire Ray, which is at its maximum potential at level 19. You could even change Bolster Spell and put it at level 15 instead, and then delay improved initiative for level 19, as you have more, you know, power with, let's say, Chain Lightning and Hellfire Ray earlier. As for more level 9 spells, Mind Blank Communo is a must now. For Sight, I prefer to leave to other characters, since it does cost a lot of slots. And as far as Heroic Invocation, you know, Darren can learn it, and I just leave it for him. I usually always have Darren on my party as well. At last, we are at level 20 for our last Lore Master Secret. Like I said, you can go a number of different ways, you can steal another level 9 spell, which I don't find really that useful at this point. What I would personally pick is Shatter Defenses, by now we are already fighting Demon Lords at the very end game, including for the first DLC, Inevitable Access, which has enemies with very stacked stats, Shatter Defenses is going to help a lot. And then well, we can pick any other level 9 spell here. Alright, so let's get into Mythic Progression for our Enchantment Laughing Mage. For this character, I would just go with Instrument of Freedom, I mean, we aren't going Azata, which is a thematic ascension. Plus, being able to empower your allies with Holy is always a nice boost for the toughest of encounters, and you do get a lot of uses of this eventually. You can, however, also go with Close to the Heavens for more healing to your allies. As far as your first mythic ability, for once, with a caster, we aren't going for abundant casting. What we want is, of course, best jokes which makes our hideous laughter hit the entire enemy army. For full packs of crowd-controlled, laughing enemies sitting on their butt. For Mythic Rank 2, we can't delay it anymore, we really want abundant casting. Especially for a sorcerer who already has a great number of spell slots, 
but most let you have even more casts of our crowd control spells as you use them on every single battle in the dungeon. For Mythic level 3, improve at abundant casting, as at this point you should already have level 4 and even level 5 spells. Perfect for greater command spam. For Mythic rank 4, this is when I would go with Sorcerer's Reflex. This lets you cast your first spell during battle as a swift action, just like a quicken spell, so long as it is at least 2 levels lower than the maximum level of spells you can cast, which is level 9 spells for us, so up to level 7 spells. The main reason of picking this early is because you know we can use meta magic hideous laughter when combined with best jokes even early game to heighten spell. And since it will hit all of the enemies, it is in your best interest to get this, so it won't take a full round action to cast. You can cast it immediately and right after that, attack or cast another spell, all in the same round. I don't particularly think mythic spell penetration is needed for an Azata sorcerer, because at this point is also when we get our first superpower, which will be without a doubt favorable magic, one of the ultimate spellcasting enhancing abilities in the entire game. And here's why I said that about mythic spell penetration. Whenever you make a check to overcome the enemy's spell resistance, you roll twice and pick the best result. There truly is nothing for a crowd control caster that is as valuable as favorable magic early on. So amusingly enough, Azatas can also learn the hideous laughter spell on their spellbook, but it will be at much lower DC than the one of your main sorcerer. As for Mythic level 5, greater abundant casting, as at this point you already have at the very least level 7 spells. For Mythic level 6, this is when I would pick Mythic spell focus and enchantment. For your second superpower, I really would recommend you go with CP magic. This can help a lot with, let's say, chain lightning to clear entire rooms of enemies, and even for, you know, more damage with Hellfire Ray. It can even help a lot with some Azata buffs like Believe in Yourself, because it also chains buffs to a nearby ally. You can of course go with Life Bonding Friendship, as this is a high charisma character, it's just that honestly, I much rather would have less stand on my allies if I wanted them to keep on fighting beyond death. For Mythic level 7, as I said before, at this point you certainly already have 15 levels in Sorcerer, you also get to pick a Familiar and we want Hair for plus 4 initiative, any class skill here doesn't matter. You also gain new spells, so 2 spells, any sorcerer spell that you can pick here, up to the maximum level you can cast at the moment, which should be like up to level 8 spells, you won't have level 9 spells at the moment, where you can pick anything you want really. And then of course enchantment for our school power to boost its DC by plus 2. For your mythic feat at level 8 you have two choices, either improved initiative or mythic improved critical and ray. The other one you can pick at mythic 10 instead. I'd rather pick Improved Initiative for now, because at this point you'll soon be fighting the toughest of the Demon Lords, and it does help to act before they can react, as you just outright crowd control them into submission. As for another superpower, well, as I said before, you can go with Life Bonding Friendship, I would rather go with Incredible Might, not just because it can buff your own Azata, but also you can share it with your party members, and at this point, you can give everyone plus 5, morale to both attack and damage rolls, which is an extra plus one over heroic invocation, the ultimate spell that does the same. But of course you can also pick Marvelous Endurance for very high regeneration on your Azata. The feat I would pick with Life Bonding would be Shake It Off, and later Elite Spellcaster. For Mythic level 9 you have a few choices. Last stand to ensure your character survives against everything including the Demon Lords, and especially the inevitable excess DLC enemies on Unfair. Ever ready, even if you want like more power to attack of opportunity, kinda overkill. And favorite meta magic bolstered. I think overall last stand is a much more efficient feat. Don't forget you can also pick ascended element and then fire. As at this point you already have the Grandmaster's Rod, so you won't have to rely on the Devouring Lust Meta Magic Rod to change the damage type of Hellfire Ray from Fire to Unholy. As for Mythic level 10, you can pick Improved Critical Ray, if you didn't pick it before, or Improved Mythic Initiative, or even Expanded Arsenal, and then Into Illusion. Although I don't think it's necessary, we can have High Illusion DC even without it. Alright, now let's get into gear selection for our Feylord character. The amulet for once is not Valexius, it is actually the Glass Amulet of Clarity, because this enhances the DC of all your mind affecting spells by plus 2 plus 1 over Valexia, who would give a plus 2 to Charisma instead. Plus you can also get this way earlier than Valexia's. When it comes to armor, 
Haramakis, as they won't interfere with your spellcasting and can have some pretty powerful effects. Deadly Rays, for example, gives plus 4 insight bonus to ranger touch attack rolls, which is great for Hellfire Ray. The Robe of the Seven Sins, as usual, is the ultimate choice here. The increase to caster level does matter for duration and also chain lightning damage, and the extra DC is amazing as well. Earlier you can use other robes like the Robe of Inevitability for plus 2 bonus to spell penetration, or the Robe of Determination. As far as belts, at first belts that increase your dexterity and constitution, and after belts of physical perfection for a boost to all physical stats, and as an Azata you can get pretty high physical scores. As far as the gloves, Twisted Temptation are by far the best, not only for the plus 2 DC to the enchantment spells, but also the very useful extra minus 2 penalty to will saving throws. As far as boots, as usual Ronak Sacrifice are by far the best, especially since this build can amusingly enough achieve pretty high dexterity with little investment whatsoever. For the helmet slot, at first headbands of charisma and later headbands of mental perfection, for an increase to all our mental stats, darkness caress being the best. As far as glasses, the goggles of mind control are the ultimate choice here, for the extra plus 2 DC to mind affecting spells. And the illusion instant death spells are also mind affecting by the way, it's not just enchantment. The only downside is that these glasses only come from Nenio's Enigma dungeon, which is you know, the most insufferable place in the whole game. When it comes to cloaks, as usual cloaks of resistance with the highest modifier possible, it is very easy to achieve extreme saving throws with this character, especially if you have Scylla cast the Bestow Grace spell on you. As far as rings, first the Red Salamander Ring, which will grant us a lot of free and powerful fire spells, most importantly Hellfire Ray and Fiery Body. The other fire spells can also help you defeat swarms early game. For another nice ring, Magician's Ring for the bonus to illusion spells of plus 2 DC. If you don't care for the illusion spells, however, there's always the Ring of Evasion. After all, we have such high reflex that this will make you avoid most area of effect damage, especially from annoying mythic demon spellcasters. For the braces, you have two choices. First, braces of armor with the highest amount to get some armor class going, although armor isn't as important for a spellcaster character. And even when we are at melee range, we have reach. The other option is the Stormlord's Resolve Bracer. Similar to the Red Salamander Ring, it will grant you a lot of free lightning spells. Most importantly, Storm Boats. Chain Lightning works too. Now let's get into the weapon and quick slots for our spellcast, both of which are very important. The best weapon for the highest DC is the Quarter Staff of the War Mage. Not only for the bonus to spell penetration, but most importantly, plus 2 to the DC of all your spells, no matter the spell school. Second, this character also has proficiency with long spears. We do have nice swag, long spears look pretty cool in Wrath. And with them you can attack from reach behind your allies and tanks as you remain safe, especially after crowd controlling the enemies into submission. Now when it comes to your quick slots, as usual, a greater quicken meta magic rod, mostly to quicken weird and also overwhelming presence. For spells of level 7 and lower, you can just rely on Sorcerer's Reflex instead. The Grandmaster's rod should maximize and empower any spell, for the highest spell damage possible, great for storm bolts and hellfire ray, but most importantly, this rod also has a very nice property of allowing you to bypass immunities the enemy might have, which then combos quite nicely with the weird spell, so you can truly instantly kill anything in the game, including demon lords, including enemies immune to mind affecting like the Galo storm caller demons and even swarms. Third, the devouring lust meta magic rod, not only for the very powerful maximize property of any spell level, but also to change the damage type of our lightning and fire spells into unholy. This is why I don't bother picking ascended element electricity. The old grimoire can be pretty fun too, just to grant you more spell slots of level 1, 2 and 3 spells. And well, Hidra's Laughter is one of them. Not to mention haste and metamagic versions of Hidra's Laughter too, which can by the way achieve very high DC even at low levels, thanks to all of the enchantment boosts we have. Extend and lesser extend metamagic rods can also help, for example, the ultimate Azata DC enhancing spell, Songs of Steel, is a level 6 Azata mythic spell, and it only lasts one round per level. With the Extend Rod, we can double that. Not to mention for, let's say, Haste 2, 
since we aren't getting enduring spells with this build. Lastly, the Signet of House vs Vertilio, just to increase any skill of choice. Ideally, you want Persuasion, so you can truly make all of the Persuasion checks during dialogue. Alright, so this was it from my Feylord, Laughing Mage, Enchanted Focused Caster build. If you found this guide fun, please remember to like, subscribe, and even consider becoming a channel member. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends.